You know, it's funny. Um, when I start thinking about my journey, like watching this, and I've been on quite the journey as an artist creating stuff. And I, I um, but you know, I, I have to give it up to Keenan Ivory Williams. I, um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Keenan. So let me, let me explain the journey. Because uh, in the room tonight, I know it's a lot of filmmakers and artists. Hey, what's going on guys? If you are an actor or a film director, you want to check out what Robert Townsend talks about in this video. He drops some mean nuggets. But don't take my word for it. See for yourself. I'm from Chicago. I moved to New York. Thank you. I moved to New York City and I started having bad auditions. <laughs> I, I get my first audition for a, uh, a pimp. I call my mother. Mama, 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 play the pimp, mama. Oh, baby, I hope you get that part. Be the best pimp you can be. <laughs> the whole church was praying for me. <laughs> Let's pray that Brother Mama gets the part of Suki and Good Dick. <laughs> I auditioned for my first slave. Call my mother, mama, they're gonna tie me to a tree and then I run away, then I run back and I come back. Mama, it's a good part. Baby, I hope they whip your ass. Get it, baby, get it. <laughs> I auditioned for illiterate basketball players that couldn't read. Oh, she, she, she in the, 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 the house. So here's where my life changed. Here's where Robert Townsend was born. I had the worst audition of my life. There was a director from England who was doing a black exploitation movie about pimps. And he was trying to tell me how to be black. <laughs> no, 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 it's all wrong, it's all wrong. You get out of the cataract, you go over to her, you pimp slap her, pep, 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 pep. <laughs> You're a bad minister. I need to see it in your face. Can you make your nostrils flat? Make your nostrils flat. And I was doing it. Can you stick your butt out? I know you black guys have big butts. Stick your butt out. Can you hold your cock? What do you prefer, dick? Dick, cock, cock, dick. You say your first line. Sean Dequan de Miqua. I know you're holding out on me, ho. Sean Dequan de Miqua, I know you're holding out on me, ho. And let me see it in your book. And I did it all. And I, I walked out of the audition and the, the door was still open. And I could hear them talking about me. He's all wrong, he's all wrong. I need a nigga. I need a nigga! Get Maggie on the phone. Get me another light skin nigga. I need a dark one. <laughs> and as I was listening to him talk, I was outside the hallway and I said, wow, I'm that, that actor, that people-pleasing actor. So what do you think? I know, I know, it's a little early. We just getting started. In this next clip, Robert talks about what changed his life and his collaboration with Keenan Ivory Waynes. Let's watch more. Cock balls, yeah. This is the moment that changed my life. I said, Keenan, we're gonna die. Man, we're gonna die in Hollywood doing this bullshit. Fuck Hollywood. Fuck Hollywood, man. We're gonna die doing this. And Keenan, wow. What are we gonna do, man? What can we do? Keenan, we gotta make our own movies. We gotta make our own movies, Keenan. Let's make a movie, man. Let's make a movie. Rob, you didn't go to film school. You never even directed a short, Rob. Keenan, we gonna die 
Man, if we don't do this shit now, fuck them, do it, let's go. Let's jump off the building, man. Keenan says, Rob, we're just two boys from the projects. That means we can do anything. <laughs> In that moment, two brothers from the projects, him from Chelsea, me from Chicago, we decided to make a movie. I had never directed before. I just knew what I wanted to see on the screen. All those images, and let me explain, I love movies. I am like a film <laughs> professor. Black movies coming up, I remember Black Caesar. With Fred Williams. Woo! Get the legends, Paul! Get the legends, Paul! I remember Mahogany, Billy D. Williams. Woo! You are my own fall of success is nothing without someone to share it with. Claudine, James Earl Jones! You, you see, Claudine, the daddy gotta be the breadwinner if I can't pay for the income and the outcome. <laughs> Cooley High, Glenn Turner, that model. Say goodbye. And he's man, cheese, we was high. I fell in love with Simba. Hollywood Shuffle. We shot it in 12 days. 12 of the hardest days of my life. 12 days. We couldn't afford permits, so we had to run from the police. If the police couldn't see us, it was a great location. Camera's here. You talk about being a filmmaker. I just remember the first day of shooting. I was so nervous. I was so scared because I looked over at Keenan. Keenan's like, come on, man, you got this rock. And the crew, all these eyes on me, looking and looking and asking for directions. And this is the right jacket and the other shirt. And the, do you want the car over here? Do you want that over there? And the first time, I said, action. Then the second time I said, action. Then the third time I said, camera's here. No, no, camera's here. No, camera's here. And then it got into my clutch to me. Camera's here! <laughs> Two shots over here. Camera's moving down the tracks. I got the crane up here. Go through there. Two shots. Move around. Steagle. Move it around. So tonight, Thanks to Gentleman Jack, some of you in this room will be born. Some of you will be born. The only thing that's going to stop this new generation of filmmakers is fear. Is fear. Because some that? of you are afraid, and we're all afraid. There's fear that comes with this position, that seat, this spotlight. Some of you want it, and some of you, as my daughters call it, have frenemies. And they kind of support you and they kind of hate you and they support you and they hate you and they support you and they hate you. It's the person that has your cell phone. So once you leave out of here, somebody's going to say, how was this shit with Robert Towns? How was this shit with Robert Towns? Then you're going to be famous. Be careful when you share your dreams with Be careful when you share your dreams with I'll tell you one story real quick and I'll come back. Because <laughs> this is for everybody in the room. Yeah. I'll tell you about the day I almost gave up. The day I almost gave up. I wasn't doing a scene, none of this. I was in New York City. It was 1979. I'm a young actor in New York City. And all I did was extra work. I was in the Wiz, one of the citizens of Emerald City. I was in the Warriors. I was in the Ritz. I was on all my children walking behind Erica Kane. I did that for seven years. I did dog food commercials because I could do impressions of animals. <laughs> 
I did voiceovers for Bill Cosby for Ford to do his voice so they could see if the timing worked. There's something about a Chrysler and a Ford that makes no difference. I did all kinds of things, and then everything dried up. I couldn't pay my bills. Nothing was working. I called my mother, and I had this conversation. Ma, it's not working. I, I, I gave it my all. I, I'm coming back home. I, 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 I tried. I tried. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's getting juicy. So, I, I have always been a firm believer, and you have to watch what you say. Words are more powerful than we give them credit for, right? If you say hurtful things to yourself and, and hurtful things are, you know, you, you, you don't do something right and you, you tear yourself up. Oh, you nitwit, you fucking dummy, you can't do nothing. Like, those are hurtful words targeted at yourself. And you actually feel them. You feel those words. They're very powerful. So the same thing can be said when it's great words said to yourself. They're uplifting. Well, in this next clip, Robert talks a little bit more about how to watch your word. Pray it. If it is for you, it is for you. Go to church. So that's Sunday. I went to church in New York City. It was in Lincoln Center. It was a his gentleman, his name was Dr. Eric Butterworth. And he wasn't a minister, he was more of a teacher. And his one sermon changed my life. And it was this. He was old and he was frail, old white dude, but he was really smart. And he had life. Watch your words. Watch your words. If you say it's going to be a bad day, it's going to be a bad day. Yeah. If you say they don't want you for that part, they're not going to want you for that part. Change your words, change your life. Yeah. Change your words, change your life. Change happens in a second. In a second. Change your words, change your life. It was like he was speaking right to me. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to turn my life around. I am going to turn my life around. I got to watch everything I speak. So I get home and the phone rings. It's my agent calling and it's a Sunday. Robert, you got an audition to be an extra in a Pepsi commercial. And uh, it's at Fordham University. They just want to see what you look like on camera. It's tomorrow. And I said to myself, words, I'm getting this. I'm going to get this. That weekend, I did something I had never done before. I stayed at home and watched television just watching Pepsi commercials. Pepsi commercials, Pepsi commercials, Pepsi commercials, Pepsi commercials, red, white, and blue. Pepsi commercials, Pepsi, 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 Pepsi. I had a jar of pennies in it. I went to a sporting goods store that next morning. I got all the pennies out and I bought a red, white, and blue headband. I go to the audition, he brings in 15 people at a time. I'm the tall brother standing right there. And so the casting director, she's a hippie chick. And she goes, I want all of you to get this part. I want all of you to get this part. I want all of you to have a good time. Just play. Just play. And I decided to play. She said, it's a frisbee game. I want to see where the frisbee is. When I say the frisbee's over here, just look over here. And then when I say the frisbee's over here, look over here. And I decided to have fun. When she said the frisbee was over here, I looked over here. When she said the frisbee was over here, I looked over here. I get home, my agent calls. Robert, you got it. But the director wants to make sure you know where the frisbee is. <laughs> <laughs> so, we get to Florida University. I'm the tall brother in the back row. I'm the tall brother in the back row. And I decide to have even more fun. I decide to name the frisbee players on the field while we're watching. Come on, Larry. Come on, Dennis. Come on, Michael. Oh, come on. Rick, what you doing, man? And I'm practicing. Cut. All the other extras started laughing at me. 
Man, what you doing? They might watch it, your ass, man. We are, we extras. That's all we ever gonna be is extras, man. The hell you doing? We extras. And I walked away. Words. 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 Fuck what they're talking about. What can you tell me? I started to go ahead again. This time I worked on my smile. I worked on holding the can different ways. They say cut. First they did. The guy in the red, white, and blue headband moved to the fourth row. I do it again. I practice, I practice, I practice. Again. The guy in the red, white, and blue headband moved to the second row. I get home, and there's nine messages on my answering machine. And my agent calls again. Robert, what did you do? What did you do? What did you do, Robert? What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? I said, I, 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 I was just being silly. I, I was acting funny and having a good time and just being crazy. Whatever you did, do it again. They just made you a principal in the commercial. This is going to be Pepsi's biggest campaign. I made close to $50,000 off that one commercial. So the lesson and the moral to the story to all my filmmakers out there, watch your words. Have to love appreciation. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you for staying with me this long. Always remember to appreciate more and highlight that and not the negative or what you currently don't have. And you'll find yourself in a better headspace. In this next clip, Robert talks about appreciating more and how he treats every day like it's his birthday. As a director, you must have a lot of gears. You gotta have a bag of tricks to equal performances. And so, you know, when, when, I, when I see, sometimes I see films, and the actors don't know where they came from before they came there. So if I went around this room and I said, where did you come before you were here? I was at the dentist, I was at the work, I was at, you know, at a restaurant eating. Everybody has some place. I was up all night, I was asleep, you know. So all of that factors into the character. So part of the dance for me as a director is that I really know everything about the world that I'm directing and I'm creating. So I've even concern of the extras and how they're moving in the scene. So everything matters in the frame. I don't let anything get past. So like if you, it, it, uh, all my films and television shows, I try to design in such a way that you have to watch them again because there's always something going on. There's layers and layers to, to the world. And speaking of, you know, your movies, your television show, I mean, you've created across so many different disciplines uh, from comedy specials to uh, you know, Partners in Crime, the TV show, the movies. Can you talk about how you navigated or why you choose to go from stage to screen in the movie and maybe some of the difficulties you encountered early on when people try to put you in that box of saying you're just this one type of director? Um, I've, I've never wanted to be in a box. So for me, I, I go with what my instincts tell me, guide me, direct me. So, um, I remember when I was doing Meteor Man, people were like, why are you doing Meteor Man? But I was really going after a million dollars if the franchise worked. So when I saw, you know, Black Panther, I said, okay, I wasn't wrong. It's just that my timing was a different way. So. I mean, you, you've often been ahead of time. Like, I mean, even uh, Five Heartbeats, when it was like country and hip hop. And we got a little bit of this, you know? Like, you've been ahead of the game for a long time. Uh, my last question, and I'm going to open up for a couple questions from the audience. What has been one of your most magical moments on one of your projects? You know, can I say this? Um, every day is like my birthday. Every time I'm on set, every time I get to say action cut, it's not like one... It's like... Uh, 
watching Beyonce audition for Carmen the Hip Hopera and watch her fearlessly roam around in her fancy heels and go, I'm going to show you I want this part, and giving me everything there. Um, I don't know, there's so many magical moments that I just freaking love. I can't name one because every time I get to say action and cut, there's something. Like, I just uh, shot this new project, you know, my, uh, um, uh, uh, it's kind of a gospel twilight zone. My whole crew, they're all here tonight. Bethany and Dominique and Raquel and uh, Quentin, and, you know, so the whole squad is here. But I'm excited about that right now because it's, uh, it's kind of like a gospel twilight zone. So I just like different stuff. A lot of thought-provoking stuff, huh? Guys, one last stop. I just want you to know that you are in control of your life. You get to decide what path you want to go down day in and day out. And it's up to you to stay on that path. But here's something super important to remember. There are multiple lanes on that path. You might be in one lane currently, but you might have to make a shift. You might not be in the right lane and you have to make a shift. When you make that shift, you're still in the, on the right path. It's important to know that, to remember that. You're, you're on the right path. You just have to make a shift, whether it be left or right, and put that blinker on before you make that shift. But no, seriously, in all honesty, you got to make that shift. It may be hard at first if it's different than what you see for yourself, but anyway. No, if they're not, here's, here's the thing. If you're really talking about being bored in this game, you said you, you, you stood there and said, hey, I, I'm, I'm about to give up. You haven't exhausted your supplies. You're not tired. You're not starving. You're not working. If you really say you want it, do you want it? 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 And if you say, like, well, I did everything because you were playing ball by yourself. So if you're playing hero ball, you ain't gonna win. You see all these people in this room? There's the team, dude. Yeah. Now here's the thing. If you can reach across the aisle and say, hi, I'm a filmmaker, would you look at my stuff? Hi, I'm a filmmaker, would you look at my stuff? Hey, I can so and so and so and so. The squad is here. It's like me and Keenan, they go like, can you get us to slide? You don't know who the next big filmmaker, writer, director, producer is sitting in this room right now. But if you know, I came here solo, I'm leaving solo. I have to introduce myself. How many people have you met tonight? Oh. Ah! Ah! You say, I'm, 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 I just want to get to you, bro. Now, if you say you want your dream, then this is your wake-up call, dude. You didn't talk to the wrong person today. This is the wake-up call. If you choose to be born in your destiny, then you are in your destiny. Now, you could be in the wrong lane. You might not be a director, you might be a writer. You might be a really great producer. You might be an editor. I don't know. You've got different caps on. But now it's time to be fearless if you say you want this. Like, you feel my energy? I came in here, you look at the real and you meet me and you go like, no, he's the real deal. He's a liar. You follow? I want you to be born. Don't be afraid. Because that's fear. That's the fear. But I'm glad you're here today because now you should meet at least 100 people in this room to figure out what you think. I believe that's the last question. What did I tell you? Some gold nuggets, right? Man, I know I got a lot out of that session. I was, it was an absolute honor to be in attendance and listen to that icon speak. Uh, guys, this is a really good time. Do me a favor and you a favor. Click that subscribe button. Let me know that you like this content so I can give you more like, like it. Speaking of which, tap that for me twice.
That's it for today's show, guys. Again, thanks, thanks, thanks. Appreciate you more than anything. Go out there, appreciate someone more than anything. Appreciate yourself and the work you put in. You got it in you. Exhaust all resources. Until next time, get some. And how treat how to treat every birth every day like it's his birthday. Fuck, I was so close.